I recently had one of those evenings where me and the missus were aimlessly scrolling through all of the streaming services, looking for something good to watch. After what seemed like a decade of indecisive, what do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? We both dangerously teetered on the verge of experimenting with medieval eye gouging techniques, or simply staring up the cat's bum, just so we could escape the agony of indecision and bask in perpetual darkness instead of choosing a film. Finally, we narrowed down our list to the thriller genre, because we consumed every true crime documentary series ever made in existence. Now, by looking at the film poster of Knox Goes Away, you'd be correct in thinking that Michael Keaton's second movie as a director falls firmly into the bargain basement bin of uninspired movie posters, reminiscent of a six-form art project scrabbled together ahead of a deadline. I mean, is Michael Keaton rummaging around in his coat for his car keys here? Is the film about a man stuck in a shopping center with a frenzied daughter foaming at the mouth to use his credit card? I guess it can't be worse than the bizarre hand of Nicolas Cage in the heavily edited Bangkok Dangerous poster, where he seems to be holding an invisible gun while his other hand disappears into a strange void near his right armpit. So, I already had my suspicions of watching Knox Goes Away from the outset, but as we'd started developing blisters on our thumbs from scrolling on the remote control for so long, we politely declined our cat's invitation to gaze longingly into the abyss of her asshole and settled in to watch a film about a contract killer who begins to suffer from a rapidly evolving form of dementia. And you know what? Knox Goes Away isn't a bad film. For those expecting the high-octane carnage of the John Wick franchise, you may want to saddle your expectations at the door. Knox Goes Away is more reminiscent of David Fincher's latest vehicle, The Killer, about what a hitman is forced to do as his calculated world implodes. Knox Goes Away opts for a subdued approach, prioritizing character study over gun shooty shooty action. Deliberately paced and quietly mesmerizing, it reflects a more somber approach to this type of genre. Without delving into spoilers, Michael Keaton portrays John Knox, a hitman grappling with a rare disease that triggers rapid onset dementia. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. His estranged son, Miles, played by James Marsden, unexpectedly returns around the same time he discovers this fatal neurological disease, seeking assistance after committing a gruesome murder. On top of that is a botched contract killing, so time is running out and Knox needs to cash out. And quick. Talk about bad timing. It's like that one time I was midway through taking a gruesome shit and I heard the doorbell ring. Screenwriter Michael Paria doesn't settle for a single high concept plotline. He introduces three into the mix. And perhaps Knox goes away falls a little short because of this. Just like a good heist film, Knox must pull off an almost impossible task, all while becoming increasingly incoherent as his mind attempts to cling on to consciousness, like a drowning man clutching at pieces of driftwood after seven days at sea. It also avoids taking a preachy stance with the subject matter at hand. One of my biggest fears is losing my mind, and with dementia, you're unaware of having it. The film portrays this by depicting moments where a person forgets a word or a situation immediately after experiencing it, yet the associated emotions linger. Imagine feeling happy because I've just told you a joke, and then instantly forgetting what the joke is, but you're laughing without understanding why. And that's truly terrifying. And my jokes are really bad. The film's emotional depth surprises, showcasing Keaton's nuanced performance. As you observe his expressions and confusions, you might feel the same anxiety I did, unsure if he's really fully present in the moment or not. But the film is not without its faults. The detectives that are chasing leads for the botched contract killing are either superbly smart or confoundingly dumb at times, and we get to see a mishmash of both throughout their conversations. Susie Nakamura's detective character has a keen eye at the murder scene, but later on doesn't even know what the acronym IRL means. There seems to be another subplot about her family that we're not really given time to explore, but why would we want to when there's so much going on already? Apart from some clunky dialogue, most of the lines fit in with the modern neo-noir mystery. Also, Knox's boss Jericho is introduced at the beginning of the movie and is portrayed as a person you wouldn't want to cross or disappoint with a failed assignment. But then later on, we don't hear anything about him ever again. It seems like certain subplots were abandoned during the movie's progression, but what deserved more attention was the bond between father and son. There's a surprising supporting cast on show here too, although criminally underused. Al Pacino plays Xavier Crane, a mentor figure with a shady past. Marcia Gay Harden plays his ex-wife, and Joanna Kulig plays a woman who <clears throat> keeps him company every Thursday of the week. I couldn't help but feel these characters were thrown into the mix to create a sense with the viewer that any one of them could betray Knox or were manipulating him for a gotcha moment, you may see the main plot twist of the film coming a mile off, but I was too preoccupied with trying to piece together who would benefit most from Knox's condition. 
Overall, Keaton demonstrates technical skill by employing different stylistic methods like blackouts and visual effects to portray his character's deepening confusion. At times, though, some of his shots seem straight out of a teleprocedural like Law and Order or NCIS. As anticipated, he gives a standout performance, embodying Knox's resilience, his acknowledgement of his circumstances, and his growing fragility in a captivating way. I would recommend Knox Goes Away to anyone who's interested in this type of film. And maybe, just maybe, I won't judge a film by its film poster in the future. Until the next time, stay ghoulish. Bye.